Searching the web for the most talented, creative, and intriguing independent authors. Man, those are all people I know. The Emmett Blackwell Show, diving into the creative minds of sci-fi, fantasy, horror, and paranormal authors. Their fantasy is our reality. Welcome once again to the Emmett Blackwell Show. I want to thank you all for listening, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. It really helps get the author's name out there. On this episode, I will be speaking with the author of the Zombie Road series, David A. Simpson. We discuss his inspirations, how he was able to write five books in just a year and a half, and what he has planned for the future of the series. We will also quiz him on his zombie trivia knowledge at the end of the show, so stay tuned for that. So, without any further ado... Let's explore the post-apocalyptic mind of David A. Simpson. Zombie Road by David A. Simpson The people that tried to kill the world were fiendishly clever. After decades of planning, the contagion was unleashed, and overnight, hundreds of millions died and came back as rampaging undead monsters. The living that had been lucky enough to survive the first day of carnage lucky enough to be in the right place and lucky enough that some of them had the skills they needed soon found out there was much more to worry about than just zombies in the high desert on the outskirts of reno there is an old truck stop frequented by a mix of hard caliber truckers day tourists musicians and travelers they have survived the chaotic first hours of contact with the undead and now must make their way across the country to a location they believe is safe Zombies are only the beginning of their troubles, as they try to cover the thousands of miles of open road with a hastily armored 18-wheelers. Gunny, a long-haul trucker doing one of the few jobs available to him as a disgraced soldier, is unwillingly saddled with the job of getting these survivors to the safe zone. With a motley crew of truck drivers, college kids, veterans, a drug dealer, and a rock star, they are racing the clock to make it before time runs out. The last text he received from his wife before the cell towers went down, told him she was trapped in a high-rise in downtown Atlanta, and their son was in detention, stranded in the basement of a school he attended. Gunny just wanted to drop the hammer, steal some guns, and blast his way in to rescue them, but duty called. He had to get these people to safety first, then he could recruit the best of his crew to help him save his family, if they survived the journey. Check out the Zombie Road series by David A. Simpson on Amazon.com. All right, and we are back, and I am here with the author, David A. Simpson. David, how are you doing today? Hey, bud, doing well, thanks. Awesome. So, now, when did you begin writing? Um, like the Zombie Road series? A uh, well, year and a half ago. Wow, a year and a half ago, that's it? Yes, sir. Wow. And you've come up with five books. That's, that's amazing. Um, did you write before when you were younger? Uh, yeah, man. I'm, I'm, I guess most writers do. They grow up, you know, coming through school, middle school, grade school, high school, write a lot of stuff. And, uh, you have this dream of becoming a writer. It just, it didn't happen, you know, not till later in life. And I tried again. Wow. Yeah. Definitely keep trying. This is what's what it's all about. Now, um, yes, what, what authors have inspired you? Um, man, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of old. I like Ray Bradbury, you know, mm. uh, Poe, of course, and everybody loves Poe. Stephen King, man, he's awesome. I read everything he ever wrote, I think. Yeah, I tell you what, Stephen um, King has been mentioned on this show more than, more than enough times than I can count on my fingers. It's, <laughs> he's inspired so many people. So now you've written five zombie road books. Do you plan on making any more? Yes, sir. There's, um, I've got 11 books outlined. Oh, wow. So there's at least that many in the series. It's, if people keep reading them, I'll keep writing them because it's, it's a fun story to write. I like the characters myself. You know, it's, I don't want to kill any of them off. <laughs> and in the zombie story, that's kind of hard to do. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So now, uh, what are some of your favorite zombie movies or TV shows that you watch? I mean, everybody walks Walking Dead. And of mm -hmm. course, you know, I'm, I'm a fan also. But I like Zombieland. I like some of the weirder stuff like The Battery. 
Mm -hmm. uh, Bride of Frankenstein, Shaun of the Dead, you know, Train oh, yeah. to Busan, you know, those those kind of stuff. Wow, yeah, I definitely liked Shaun of the Dead. When they combined comedy with zombies, it, you can't go wrong. You really can't. Um, so now yeah. the zombie, the zombie contagion starts to wipe out most of the planet and leaves only a few who have survived to fight back. Gunny, the main character, is tasked with getting a large cast of characters to safety. He also is trying to find his wife and son. Um, did you use your own personal experiences to shape how Gunny would react to his missing family? Uh, you know, you, I've, not personal experiences, but you, you would think, you would hope, you know, you would, you would do the right thing. Um, I'm, you know, J Gunny's kind of like John Wayne. He's, he, he'll do the right thing regardless yeah. of the consequences kind of thing. Yeah. It's kind of hard to draw on experiences when we haven't had any zombies yet, you know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so now along with Gunny, there seems to be just the sliver of each part of society along for the ride. How did you build these different characters? Man, those are all people I know. <laughs> That's Almost every character in that book. See, I, when I first started writing this, you know, you, you, you don't think you just it's in your head. You got to get it out. So instead of making up characters, I just use my friends and family and like, OK, you know, Grizz is bear and, you know, just all these characters that I know. And that was easy to keep track of them. And when the book started selling, like, oh, my gosh, I'm, uh, you know, I, it surprised me more than anyone. Yeah. Zombie Road 2. Bloodbath on the Blacktop picks up where the last one left off. Did you add any more characters to the mix? Uh, there's a few that come in here and there. There's one super bad guy who 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 joins the caravan in the second book, and he's he's a pain in their he's a thorn in their side all through the rest of the books. Sweet. So now after the second book, there was a coloring book that you created, right? Um, yes, sir. It didn't actually come out until probably after the fourth book. It took a long time to get it done, but oh, we yeah. started doing it a while back yeah and you teamed up with an artist what's the name of that artist oh uh, man wahoo widodo he's from um jakarta oh yeah and i found him on the internet man he just he's wow I, he's talented he's got mad skills yeah and that's kind of crazy because this coloring book is massive it's a 150 page coloring book um did you how was it received by your fans um everybody likes it it's they like it. I mean, the, the pictures are spot on. Um, I hired him originally to just do some T-shirt designs for us, mm -hmm. and man, people loved it. So I got a lot of requests for you should do a coloring book, and you know, just if they want it, I'll do it. So we we did it. Yeah, it sounds like an interesting way to kind of market your book. Do you, do you think it kind of helped with your marketing? Um, it just came out, gosh, a couple of weeks ago, so I don't know, but. I'm hoping, you know, we have a, um, I have a big booth at Walker Stalker this weekend in Atlanta and I'm tearing pages out of the coloring books and letting all the kids color and hang them up and, you know, we'll have a contest. A winner gets some, you know, some mad swag or something. And <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's, anything can help, I suppose. Nothing hurts, right? Yeah, definitely. And that's actually, you know, for anybody who's out there who's listening, if you're creating a book series, um, a coloring book is a very creative idea and, you know, pair up with some of these freelance art or artists and check out what they can do because honestly it helps everybody else out too. I mean, you helped that artist, um, get their name out there too. And I mean, your books are already rather successful. So, I mean, really it's, it's like a win-win for everybody and it's just, it's, I've never seen anybody do this yet. So, you know, kudos to you. That's, that's a really creative idea. Well, thank you. My producer, Minch, I, my producer, I, I have a agent out in Hollywood who's trying to sell the books to movie, and he said, we should get some um, stills drawn up. I said, well, I'm doing a coloring book, man. Just hang on, and I'll send you some coloring books, and you can pass around to you know, give the creatives uh, an idea of what the, what the world's going to look like, the characters, the cars, the trucks, because it's, it's kind of Mad Max-ish, you know, that's got yeah. all these zombie cars they build, and it's, that's, that's all part of the, the allure, I think, or the, the draw to the, this particular series of books. Yeah, the way that they take a big rig and just outfit it with all kinds of stuff. And even the cars, yeah, yeah. I mean, the it's it's an amazing way of looking at a post-apocalyptic world because you're, you're pulling these parts and things that, you know, nobody's going to use. It's all just junk to somebody else. But to these guys, it's protection, you know. So that's, that's a really cool way to do it. Now, Zombie Road yeah. 5 features a new protagonist, Jesse, the disfigured road angel, and Scarlet, the daughter of the high priest of the Anubis cult. Now, what's the Anubis cult, for one? Um, they're a group that gets 
they start out by saving people and it just gets out of hand. People go power mad. Um, I, I draw from actual history, you know, real life people when I can just for comparisons. And you can compare the Anubis cult to um, the Egyptian cult gone mad with, you know, Caligula type God powers in their own minds. Yeah. And, you know, that's another thing, too. When you think about it, when the world starts falling apart, I've talked to other authors about this. When the world starts falling apart, you'll get these like little sub pockets everywhere and people will try to, to build up their own societies again. And in a situation like yours, uh, I could see where that could happen, where somebody just gets a little bit too power hungry. Um, and we've seen that in other culture uh, classics like uh, The Walking Dead, um, where they do become a little more power mm-hmm. hungry than other groups, which is, you know, it's just human nature, I guess. Right. Well, I, I put a lot of examples in my books just in passing. I, I don't try to do info dumps or be preachy, but, you know, I talk about different cults where, you know, real life situations where you can draw on it. I remember that in the news, like uh, the Moonies, you know, or, or Charles Manson, or he got these people to do crazy things just because he, he's a charismatic leader. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, there's, there's hundreds of cults out there that people just put purple veils over their face and put on Nikes and commit suicide. You know, that was that moon called out in California. Mm-hmm. People do this crazy stuff. Yeah. And that's kind of cool that you pull from real life events too, to kind of get inspiration. I've heard of that too. And it seems like it helps a lot of authors because it, it makes it humanizing because <laughs> you can talk to somebody and be like, remember seeing that story on the news? Well, what if it went this right. way? You know? Yeah. That, that's when cool. you're writing about it, 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 it's fiction. It's like, Oh, that would never happen. But then you'll throw a, a little snippet of info out there. Like this happened, this did happen. And people did do this. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just now, people how, crazy. Now, how would you describe the relationship between um, Jesse and Scarlet? The, at the end of book five, it's very rocky. Scarlet has is on a mission to kill Jesse, and Jesse knows she's an enemy, and you know he probably should be killing her instead of kind of starting to like her. <laughs> That's kind of the way it goes, huh? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so you recently finished the fifth book of the series, and you said that you have like 11 more coming. Um, what is the name of the next book that's coming out, and when is it coming out? I'm shooting for February. I've got a pretty good start on it, and it's going to be called, you know, Zombie Road 6 Highway to Heartache. Yeah, which kind of makes sense with the whole Jesse and Scarlet thing. Ah, uh, giving away spoilers, are we? <laughs> I'm just guessing. <laughs> I'm just a <the> reader. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> so now because you've been doing this for a while, even though it's only been like a year and a half, you've been extremely successful in that year and a half. Um, when it comes to just getting started, what advice would you give an author who's just getting started out? Who, who wants a gigantic series like you've got? You have to write. Mm -hmm. You have to, you have to have good ideas. I mean, um, you you just got to write. And and I went, I went into this, you know, it's all or nothing. I went to it. I mean, just full fledged. I gave everything, every dime I made the first year, I sank right back into marketing, advertising, conventions, you know, giveaways. It just, I sank, you know, fifty thousand dollars of money I made right back into the book. I didn't make anything on it the first year. Wow! And it, it, it's all or nothing, you know. Just, and I got lucky. Yeah. I know it's there's better writers than me out there. It's just, I don't know. I had the right people, the right something, just. It clicked with people and I'm just, I'm just one of the lucky guys, but anybody can be lucky. You know, anybody can make it. Yeah. And that's another thing too, is you, you talked about that you didn't really make any money until after the first year, which isn't uncommon for anybody in any type of business or being a creative in any way. You, you do have to sink a lot of your own personal money into something before people really get it, you know, before people can say, you know what, Uh, you've put enough energy and work into this and it's starting to pick up. Uh, we're willing to invest in you. And and that's another thing that authors should should understand is that, especially like if it's somebody who's looking for an agent, you know, um, who starts out as an independent author, chances are they're not going to get a, a agent the first book that they write if they don't have any type of experience no. beforehand. And I mean, you're, you're doing an excellent job. Now, you said that you do have an agent, right? Uh, no, just um, a, a movie. I don't, is, is an agent producer. He, they contacted me. They liked the books and they wanted to, I signed a contract with them so they could shop the books to different studios. I guess it's called an agent. Yeah. I don't have a, a, a writing agent. 
Well, see, and that's another thing, too, that I've, I've mentioned to other authors out there. Um, Netflix has opened up their doors, and so has Hulu, and a lot of these online streaming services have opened up their doors to creative ideas because, honestly, Hollywood isn't really creating a bunch of things unless it's for the streaming platform. They're, they're creating movies that they put out into theaters, but if you've noticed, there are a lot of remakes going, you know? Right. And it's because it's safe, you know? But then when it comes to, like, a streaming service – People who watch Netflix or Hulu, I watch Netflix and chill all the time. Um, yes, sir. I look for those original stories because it's something that that really makes Netflix appealing. And, I mean, that's awesome that you went from being an independent author to having contacts with somebody who might be able to help you in a film creation um, or TV creation or whatever it is. That is exactly the progression that we like to see here on the Emmett Blackwell Show because this is about – independent authors moving up the ladder in a non-traditional sense. So, yeah, that's very good. I mean, congratulations. I hope that everything pans out and I get to see this thing on Netflix someday or Hulu or whatever, um, because it is a very interesting story. Yeah, we're, I'd rather have it on Netflix than a movie. But uh, he actually he, he, called, he emailed me today and said he has interest from it. Would I be interested in letting an uh, animation be done of it? I'm like, like Saturday morning cartoon animation or, you know, manga anime kind of thing, but we haven't talked. That's an idea. I mean, people, I mean, that's another option for writers and stuff to get it animated. Oh yeah. Stories. And, and with the um, coloring book that you have, I mean, you could almost envision a lot of what's going to happen. That's, that's really cool. Now um, I have another quick question. I wondered if you wanted to participate in a trivia game. Okay. All right. So this is going to be zombie trivia. This is uh, spans across TV shows, um, books, and uh, movies. Um, it's going to be multiple choice. So the, you've already got uh, one up on a lot of the other people we've had on the show. So here we go. Are you ready? Yes, sir. All right. Question one. Released in 2009, what comedy zombie film stars Woody Harrelson as Tallahassee? A, Zombieland. B, Yes. <laughs> I knew he was going to pick that one. All right, yes, correct. Zombie Land. All right, question two. Who plays the role of Olivia Liv Moore in the American TV series I Zombie? Is it Ali Michalka, Jennifer Morrison, Rose McIver, or Heather Graham? Oh my gosh, I haven't seen that show. Heather. No, incorrect. No, the other one. No, the other one. The other one. The, yes, the other one. That's the one. That's the one. That's it. Yeah. Did I get it? <laughs> no, you didn't get it. <laughs> That's okay. It was Rose McIver. I didn't know that either because I I'm, I, I haven't watched it yet either. So, okay, here we go. Um, the next one. You can redeem yourself, so don't worry. Airing on Sci-Fi, what comedy drama zombie TV series features Murphy, the only known survivor of a zombie bite? Is it A, Fear of the Walking Dead, B, Ash vs. Evil Dead, C, in the flesh, or D, Z Nation. Z Nation, I met those guys last year. They're a, they're a hoot. <laughs> yeah, they are. They are. So now here's the next question: What post-apocalyptic horror film stars Will Smith as a U.S. Army medical doctor and scientist, Dr. Robert Novell? Is it A, Zombie Night? B, Rise of the Zombies? C, Dylan Dog? Dead of Night, or D, I Am Legend? I Am Legend. Oh, Richard correct. Matheson, yes. Great, great movie, too. All right, the next one. Sheriff's Deputy Rick Grimes wakes from a coma to discover that the world is overrun by zombies. Name that TV series. Is it A, In the Flesh, B, Dead Set, C, I Survived a Zombie Apocalypse, or D, The Walking Dead? That would be The Walking Dead. So. <laughs> yes, it is. Correct. Next one. Originally released in 1978 and remade in 2004, in what zombie film do we see a group retreat to an enclosed shopping center for sanctuary? Is it A, Dawn of the Dead, B, Day of the Dead, C, The Return of the Living Dead, or D, 28 Days Later? Oh, man, is that Dawn or Day? I must be thinking. Oh, gee, Day of the Dead. Nope, incorrect. You're very close, Dawn though. Of the dead. Dawn of the dead. Oh, man. All right, we'll give you that point. Okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. You only got like three more of these left, so uh, you can, you've can you gained quite a few points on this. You're doing really good. 
Written by Dolores O'Riden, what band released the protest song Zombie in 1994? Was it A. The Cardigans, B. Evanescence, C. Roxette, or D. The Cranberries? Cranberries. Yeah, yep. yeah. You know, everybody was singing that's that. On my, that's on my playlist. Yeah, everybody was singing that song when I was growing up. And, uh, yeah, you, you can only hear that so many times until you just like, <laughs> it's a great song. Okay, here we go. The next one. This is a religion zombie question, if you can believe that. Okay, here we go. Which Caribbean belief system includes magicians called Bokor reanimating the dead for use as slaves? Is it Christianity, Voodoo, Taoism, or Judaism? Voodoo. Yes, it is Voodoo. And you know that reminded me when I was when I was looking up this question that uh, you do you remember Weekend at Bernie's? Yes. Yes. See, now that's a zombie movie too, but people don't realize it because he's he's walking and dancing at the same time. And zombies right. don't usually dance unless it's in the thriller. Um, but <laughs> okay, here's the next one. Movie. This is a movie zombie question. Which of these is not a zombie movie? Now I'm letting you know right now. This is a very challenging question. Dead dudes in the house. Attack of the Flesh Devouring Space Worms from Outer Space, Gone with the Wind, or Boy Eats Girl? Man, the obvious answer is Gone with the Wind, but I'm thinking, is this a catch question? There's no zombies in Gone with the Wind. Yes, that's correct. It's not. There are no zombies okay. in Gone with the Wind. However, if anybody's out there and you're a film creator, that would be your next project. Just go ahead and get on that, because I would love to see a zombie Gone with the Wind movie. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my! Have they written one yet? I mean, there's Pride and Prejudice and zombies and Romeo and Juliet zombies. Yeah, the Abraham Lincoln versus zombies. Yeah. Yeah, dude, that was good. <laughs> it was good. Okay, here's the bonus question. This one's worth ten trillion points. If you get this question right, you win the entire game. So all the questions that you got wrong, we don't have to worry about. You'll just win the game. Here's a question. What author wrote a five-part zombie post-apocalyptic series about survival on the open road? Well, that would be me. Yes, it I is. Did that. Anybody else do that? Oh, so, okay. <laughs> yes, it was. David A. Simpson. All right. So, <laughs> David, where can people find your book, sir? Uh, Amazon. That's the easiest, best, cheapest place. You, know, you can get them from Barnes and Nobles, but you have to order them, and they they charge you out the yin yang for them. Yeah, they do up the yin yang. Ah, anyhow, um, thank you so much for being here on the show. It was a pleasure. Well, thank you, sir. Man, it was fun. It was it was good. <laughs> All right, and this is Emmett Blackwell signing out. Keep on reading and keep on writing, my friends. Searching the web for the most talented, creative, and intriguing independent authors. Those are all people I know. The Emmett Blackwell Show, diving into the creative minds of sci-fi, fantasy, horror, and paranormal authors. Their fantasy is our reality. 